Thank you very much. Thank you for the lovely music. Honorable Presidents, Honorable Prime Minister, Your Royal Highness, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, welcome to UNCTAD 2018 World Investment Forum. My name is James Chan, Director of Investment Enterprise at UNCTAD. It is my honor to be the Master of Ceremonies for today's opening of the forum. The UNCTAD World Investment Forum is a global platform for all investment stakeholders to address key emerging challenges and opportunities for investment and sustainable development. Established in 2008, this year marks the 10th anniversary of the World Investment Forum. As is now our tradition, the opening ceremony of the World Investment Forum today consists of two parts. Opening statements by the Secretary General of the UNCTAD and the distinguished guests, and then the presentation of the investment awards by the guests of honor. I now invite Dr. Mukisha Kitui, Secretary General of UNCTAD, to introduce the guests of honor and the present today and to deliver his opening statement. Thank you very much, Jens. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, may I also bid you welcome to this grand opening of the World Investment Forum 2018. I'm glad to announce the attendance of eminent global leaders from the different walks of life. And if I may just start with the heads of government, international organizations, and royalty. We have in our midst His Excellency Alain Berser, the President of the Swiss Confederation. His Excellency Mogwesi Masisi, President of the Republic of Botswana. His Excellency Hatmagin Batulga, President of Mongolia. His Excellency Hage Gengob, President of the Republic of Namibia. His Excellency Samdek Aka Moha Senapedai, Tekohun. Hussein, Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Cambodia. His Excellency Moshoai Thomas Tabane, Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Lesotho. Her Royal Highness, Princess Astrid of Belgium. Her Excellency Espinosa Gashas, the President of the General Assembly of the United Nations. His Excellency Sarkisian, President of the Republic of Armenia and the President of uh, the International Parliamentarians Union, Gwevas Baron, my, neighbor, my closest neighbor. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Your Highness, you are all welcome to this 10th edition of the UNCTAD World Investment Forum. Ladies and gentlemen, As I welcome you to the Palais de Nations for the 2018 World Investment Forum, now marking our 10th anniversary, this year's WIF has attracted record numbers of participants. More than 6,000 participants, more than a dozen heads of state and government, more ministers from more than 50 countries, more than 50 CEOs of large international uh, companies, thousands of representatives of the private sector, from stocks exchanges, institutional investors, sovereign wealth funds, impact investors, investment promotion agencies, accounting experts, entrepreneurs, the list goes on and on. And partners from across the spectrum beyond the private sector, governments, United Nations organizations, other multilateral and regional organizations, development banks, academia, representatives of youth, 
representatives of civil society. Over the past three years, since the Triple Promise of 2015, made by global leaders in Addis, New York, and Paris, and indeed echoed in other capitals of the world, we in the United Nations system have been loudly calling for closer engagement with the private sector to further the most ambitious development agenda ever made by man and woman. Many of us have talked a lot about the importance of private sector participation in fulfilling the missing trillions in SDG annual financing shortfalls. Many of us at these meetings continue to talk to ourselves about engagement. But the entrepreneur, the private sector, civil societies have not been in the fora where we're talking these things. But I'm humbled today to see here in Geneva the thousands of business leaders coming together with politicians, thought leaders, visionaries to walk the talk and how to scale our private investment in the SDGs. We at UNCTAD are very proud of this record turnout and growing strength of our World Investment Forum as the premier multilateral platform for bridging the investment and development divides. UNCTAD is convening power as part of the UN convening power has established this forum to facilitate high-level dialogue between government heads and corporate leaders, academic experts and civil society leaders. The remarkable profile and turnout of this year's World Investment Forum bears witness to this critical need for global platform to tackle investment in sustainable development. There is a simple and urgent reason why so many of you have convened here with us this week. Today, just 10 years after the World Investment Forum first began promoting solutions for better mobilization of resources at an anchored conference in Accra, Ghana, the global investment landscape is being remade before our very eyes, and the development agenda is more at risk than it has been for a generation. Today, just 10 years after the global financial crisis began to alter the global economic landscape, and three years into the most ambitious development agenda ever, the demand for tangible actions to channel investment in sustainable development for progress is greater than ever before. Ten years after the crisis, FDI flows still have not returned to their pre-crisis levels. FDI was down again last year, and our latest figures for the first half of 2018 suggest a continued decline this year. On the brighter side, we have seen a slight uptick in planned greenfield investments, for example in Africa, but for much of the last decade, we have seen largely an investment landscape driven by consolidation and re re repatriation of profits through mergers and acquisition activities. Rather than productive investment that can deliver sustainable development, particularly in the countries and sectors most in need. This year, a World Investment Report provided some of the thoughts, thoughtful stock taking of the last 10 years of change in the in landscape of investment showing how global production networks are shortening and shifting. The return to international investment has been declining, and the rate of expansion of global value chains has slowed, faced with technological innovations and the new so-called fourth industrial revolution. International production is shifting gradually from tangible cross-border production networks to intangible value chains. The uncertainties and disruption of this medium-term shift in the global investment landscape, which has been underway over this past five, first decade of the World Investment Forum's existence, has in the past two years been compounded by the more immediate threat of declining trust in globalization and in global institutions particularly. Some point to the resurgence in populist and nativist politics as a response to those middle classes who have been left behind by globalization, mainly in the richer countries. But mounting trade war of the past year suggests we may be, in fact, witness a new geopolitical struggle for leadership at the global technolo technology frontier. 
Indeed, over the past 10 years, more than 100 countries have taken industrial policy actions, often with the goal of harnessing the technological changes underway in the world economy today. Faced with these major challenges, and faced with the most uncertainty in the global economy that we have seen since this forum was founded, at the outbreak of the financial crisis, this year's WIF must achieve more than talk. The stakes today are just too high. Concrete policies, strategies, and solutions must be forged here across the wide spectrum of investment issues, international investment agreements, investment promotion and business facilitation, capital markets, intellectual property, entrepreneurship, the digital economy, and accounting standards. We seek new solutions for driving more and better investment into the countries and sectors that need it most. We seek new solutions for countering the uncertainty and inward-looking perspectives, as well as the technological challenges and growing divides, which are witnessing worldwide today, to refocus political attention and corporate leadership on the opportunities rather than the pitfalls that the global economy can offer. Contributing these challenges, confronting these challenges is enormously important for global prosperity. Over the past two decades, cross-border investment activity has effectively become the engine of global production growth. Job creation and technological transfer has direct almost 80% of international trade. The World Investment Forum can help fill this void we see today in international economic policy making by helping to bring about gradual reforms in international investment policies, making them more sustainable and sustainable development friendly. We can show that soft policy making on key issues of international economic policy can still be done successfully. The WIF and the area of top policymakers and large audiences that it attracts is evidence that demand for international engagement on key issues in international economic policy making still exists at a time when support for multilateralism is not always that evident. At a practical level, your deliberations this week must ensure that good policies do not remain in the textbook or on the drawing board, but are enacted on the ground to drive investment activity in a manner that is inclusive, productive, and sustainable. Through your joint efforts, pooling innovations, expertise, and resources, you must increase together what we can increase for our firepower to materially contribute to sustainable development. Every one of us can play our part in helping advance an action-oriented, solutions-driven investment policy agenda geared towards delivering Agenda 2030. Finally, as we enter this week, action is worth reminding ourselves that our purpose is shared. We are working to build a sustainable, inclusive future. This means our efforts should be mutual. The challenges we face are common concerns. The solutions we seek should supersede narrow interests. Together, we'll do more to go further. Thank you very much for your kind attention. I thank the UNCTAD Secretary General, Dr. Kituyi, for his opening statement. I now have the honor to invite His Excellency, Mr. Ilan Besset, the President of the Swiss Confederation. Monsieur le Président, Les chefs d'État, Son Altesse Royale, Madame la Présidente de l'Assemblée Générale des Nations Unies, Monsieur le Directeur Général de l'Office des Nations Unies à Genève, Monsieur le Secrétaire Général de la CNUSED, Excellences, Mesdames et Messieurs, au nom du gouvernement suisse, je vous souhaite, je souhaite à toutes et à tous Une très cordiale bienvenue ici à Genève. I'd like an ex to et extend a very warm welcome to all of you here in Geneva. I'd like to thank the organizers for this 10th World Investment Forum. 
and I'd like to especially thank Knusset, the Secretary Monsieur General Moussa of Kitoui UNCTAD, Mr. Moukissa Kitoui, for inviting me La to be here. Helvétique the Swiss Confederation is very proud to be hosting this World Investment Genève, Forum here in Geneva, the biggest world meeting related to the elaboration of investment-related policies. The presence of the international community in Geneva is something that we hold close to our hearts, and Switzerland is very committed to this and also committed to work closely with international organizations. Now, to bring governments, NGOs, universities, and other representatives of civil to promote an economy of sustainable development is a challenge, especially in the world today. And Switzerland has been playing a leading role in this work by promulgating a plan of action for private investments aimed at serving the sustainable development globe. And this World Investment Forum is indeed related to the, uh, for the development of this uh, plan to mobilize international financial markets and the resources available and then to invest them in key sectors. Now, ladies and gentlemen, today we do have to realize more than ever before that sustainable development is necessary. And we have to look at this challenge together. We have to deal with this together. It concerns all of us. And I'm talking about globalization, the questions of inequality, wars, internal conflicts. I also have in mind migratory flows and, of course, climate change. I think about the questions of health or the and in the health temps, crisis and also the digital revolution. And these challenges are becoming more and more important. And we do realize that no single country can deal with these challenges without cooperating with other countries. But at the same time, what we are seeing is the rise of nationalism reflected in national policies that is accompanied with mistrust towards multilateralism, free trade, and cooperation between countries. And this reflects the great paradox of our times, the need for greater cooperation to overcome the challenges that we're facing, but also this nationalist movement. And this is very complex, and this is dangerous, and we should tirelessly continue to promote international cooperation. And I'm convinced that only cooperation and international cohesion will help us preserve peace, stable international relations, and offer a better economic future for certain parts of the world. And if this trend for weakening multilateralism continues, then this will indeed affect the poorest of us all, and the most fragile economies will suffer first. And in light of this possibility, it is our responsibility, our joint responsibility in developed countries and growing economies to avoid this result and associate the poorest of the population to the prosperity generated by the world economy. But Nothing is fully done, done because we realize that FDI has dropped 23% in 2017. And indeed, this is a negative trend, a source of long-term concern for decision-makers throughout the world, especially in developing countries where international investment is crucial in ensuring sustainable industrial development. And in this context, Indeed, in this particular context, it is important, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, to benefit from an international 
situation Une that will be favorable for favorable to investment, open investment, and to have investment policies that are transparency transparent and non-discriminatory. The fourth industrial revolution outward. Some call the fourth industrial revolution revolution, something related to new technologies and robotization, is indeed something that is very promising for sustainable development, but we should make sure that it doesn't create further inequalities. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as I have said, Sustainable development of all countries is an enormous challenge that we must deal with together. And the World Investment Forum, in a very remarkable manner, looks at innovative ways of financing this sustainable development and also bringing together stakeholders that do not necessarily always know each other, and especially bringing together the public and private sectors. And if we indeed wish to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals adopted by the United Nations in 2015, the efforts of governments and of the private sector should be coordinated. The public sector is aimed at creating the necessary framework, favorable conditions for financial innovation and promotes the integration of different economic actors in a sustainable manner. And the private sector, for its part, has the necessary tools through its creativity, knowledge, and the capacity to manage financial actors. And these investments are indeed necessary more than ever. They are the engines of innovation. They help modernize industries and connect countries to international markets. And something that is indeed a happy development that the investment markets related to environment, to social issues, and to governments have been rapidly growing over the last two decades even though their share is still quite modest. Well, this means that companies should be involved even more in the respect and the promotion of environmental standards, social standards, and standards of governance. And if the interest of the financial industry for sustainable development is growing, but still there are certain obstacles that should be overcome, because these interests of the financial sector are very often limited to small groups of pioneers, and the financial sector and the public sector often speak different languages. For example, the evaluation of risks for investments for the first and the second are very much influenced by world public goods. And the commitment of my country, Switzerland, is to support the steps that are aimed at overcoming obstacles to investment, to ensure sustainable development, and to preserve the resources of our planet. And here we're working closely with UNCTAD to help developing countries to achieve two objectives, to conserve and preserve biodiversity, but also to improve social and economic well-being. And from the point of view of reducing poverty, the economies based on biodiversity have great opportunities creating employment for rural communities, and we have to ensure gender equality, which is indeed still a great concern for Switzerland, but not only for us. And this is uh, why we support projects that uh, focus on women entrepreneurs. And in this respect, we're one of the first countries to promote the principles for responsible investment in agriculture. And UNCTAD has contributed to that work. And I have to say that Switzerland is a country that manages 30% of world microfinance. And Switzerland plays a major role play the role of a key actor in sustainable investment. And in this light, I'd like to avail myself of this opportunity to say that we're very pleased that the program of this forum includes 
numerous events related to sustainable and responsible investment, including the investments in the uh, dealing with antibacterial treatments, something that we are working on, and Switzerland has supported these initiatives. In Biotechnology. Now, in conclusion, I'd like to say the following. During this whole week, focus will be given to the enormous potential of sustainable investment. And the meetings that will take during this week, the sharing of experience, the sharing of this experience during this week should make it possible for us to develop new synergies. And we know that if we wish to move forward in a significant manner in the implementation of the SDGs, we have to be realistic, effective, but also we should be very ambitious. And all of this to avoid the arrival of a world where everyone is fighting for themselves and to ensure that we have a world of cooperation and commitment that is aimed at peace development and the protection of environment. And I do believe that we can overcome these challenges with success, challenges related to poverty, migration, uh, climate change, and we can only do this when we have trust. And this forum will indeed contribute to developing this trust. So we should all together ensure the full success of the World Investment Forum 2018. I, I thank His Excellency, uh, President of the Swiss Confederation, Mr. Alan Bexet. I now have the honor to invite Her Excellency, Ms. Maria Fernanda Espinoza Garcia, President of the General Assembly of the United Nations, to address the forum. Good afternoon, Your Highness, Princess of Belgium, Your Excellency, uh, President Berset from uh, the Swiss Confederation, esteemed heads of state uh, and government, Mr. Kitui, Secretary General Untat, uh, dear friend Michael Muller, uh, Director of the UN Office uh, in Geneva, Excellencies, distinguished panelists, ladies and gentlemen. It is an honor to be here for the 10th anniversary of the World Investment Forum. This year's event is particularly important. We live in a world experiencing transformation in all facets of human life, including the impact of automation digitization and financial derivatives on the real economy. We are also in a period that is regrettably marked by uncertainty, uh, uncertainty and characterized by uneven development, protectionism and isolationism. Our challenge, therefore, is to ensure that all of us work together, that is, governments, companies, workers, civil society, academia alike. Together we can demonstrate the importance and utility of multilateralism. And we can do this by decisions and actions that enable the world to deliver on the sustainable development goals and build a fairer, more equitable world. It is clear that in the even more inter interdependent world of today, we need more cooperation to solve the global problems that affect all of us on this planet. Thus, my call for global leadership and shared responsibilities. My friends, on this allow me to make three points this afternoon. First, I would underscore the important role of the private sector in delivering Agenda 2030 for sustainable development. Second, 
I would emphasize that empowering women and youth is key to economic development and ensuring peace and security. And third, I will make a case for investing in areas that advance environmental protection and climate action. First, let me be clear. We have a moral obligation to protect and advance the rights of billions of people around the world. As it is, approximately 10% of the world's population continue to live on less than $1.90 per day. This is simply unacceptable. We must work together to find common multilateral solutions. Only in this way can we build societies that are more peaceful, egalitarian, sustainable, and resilient. The private sector can contribute to sustainable development with responsible investments that respect human rights, environmental regulations, and fiscal regulations all at the same time. By fulfilling this moral and legal imperative, the private sector can have a positive impact on the socioeconomic conditions of a country, boosting employment, productive investments, and knowledge and technology transfer. We stress the importance of promoting quality investment for sustainable development with a clear balance of rights and obligations for all parties. Productive investment should not in any way hinder states' regulatory capacity to generate public policy for development and inclusion. With our collective action, we can all contribute to build cohesive and peaceful societies that are much needed for prosperity and development. The fact that it will take five to seven trillion US dollars per year and 60 hundred million new jobs would have to be created by 2030 to achieve the sustainable development goals, this gives us incredible opportunities to grow our economies and contribute to eradicate poverty, exclusion, and inequality. Now, for my second point, I would stress the need to empower youth and women. Doing so offers an opportunity to fast-track development, boost productivity, and contribute to peace and security. Let's start with youth young people between the ages of 18 to 29 years form the largest segment of the world's population. They are also the most creative. How we meet the needs and aspirations of this generation will define our common present, but also our common future. Yet, according to the ILO, the International Labour Organization, the total number of unemployed persons in 2017 has exceeded 192 million people. For the private sector, providing young people with decent work opportunities contributes to peaceful societies and stability. It also helps create a generation of experts and skilled practitioners. In terms of gender empowerment, when women are empowered, everybody wins. A recent McKinsey study estimates that advancing women's empowerment could add 12 trillion to global growth by 2025. It is unimaginable to think about development if we leave half of the population behind. Women's contribution to development is abundantly clear in all our societies. Do not miss this opportunity to include more women in decision-making positions and in the economic and financial world. My friends, poverty and its root causes are holding back some of our greatest minds and talents. They are also holding back the benefits all, all countries gain 
from a thriving global economy. Let us fix this. My third point refers to the urgency of investing in environmental action. From ever stronger and more frequent storms to the deluge of plastic in our oceans to the destruction of our forests, the evidence is clear. We must do more to protect the world we live in. The private sector has both a moral and fiscal responsibility to contribute to combat climate change. This is a problem that is affecting every country, every community, every person on this planet. We all need to act with a sense of urgency. The private sector can be part of the solution through low carbon technologies, emissions reduction, and support to reduce plastic pollution and deforestation. And there is opportunity here as well. The private sector serves as the engine of technological innovation as we continue our transition towards sustainable energy. These innovations are not only significant profits, but are changing the lives of billions of people, literally energizing progress across the Sustainable Development Goals. We need more of this, more creativity, more innovation, and more courage to threat into new frontier technologies. Colleagues, Excellencies, the current investment gap in developing countries stands at approximately $2.5 trillion. There is only so much that the public sector can provide. The private sector must play a role in advancing the development agenda. Over the next few days at this forum, I encourage you to devise solution-oriented ideas and approaches that are mutually beneficial for investors and nations alike. Through my presidency, I consistently and passionately advocate for multilateralism and for cooperation. It is only through global leadership, shared responsibility, and collective action that we address challenging issues and seize timely opportunities. Let me conclude by emphasizing our common interests as political leaders and business leaders. Inclusion and equality are preconditions for stable and thriving societies. Stability and skilled workforces are equal, equally vital for robust markets and businesses to thrive. The SDGs must therefore be an essential consideration for business decisions as they are for public policy. As Amanda Mahindra, Chairman of Ma and Managing Director of Mahindra and Mahindra stated at Davos, the opportunity to raise the quality of life is the biggest business opportunity going. Thank you for your attention. I thank Her Excellency, Ms. Fernanda Espinoza Garcias, the President of UN General Assembly, for her opening statement. We have received a radio message from Ms. Amina Mohammed, the Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations. I would like to show you that video message. Excellencies, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to greet you at this important gathering. Over the past decade, UNCTAD World Investment Forum has become highly respected for its emphasis on solutions to development challenges. Today, that approach is especially important as we strive together to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. Last month, Secretary General Guterres launched his strategy for financing the 2030 Agenda, underscoring the need for innovation, stronger national investments, and the alignment of global economic policies and financial systems behind the 2030 Agenda. At current rates of investment, UNCTAD estimates an annual investment gap of some $2.5 trillion to advance the SDGs. 
The World Investment Forum can play a critical role in forging the partnerships that can fill this gap and make a real difference. The public sector needs to create the necessary policy and business environment. The private sector's investments in SDG sectors will be pivotal. The United Nations will continue to play a convening role to mobilise the engagement of all key stakeholders, including the philanthropic community. It is within our power to unlock meaningful investment flows to bolster the SDGs and to combat the widening impacts of climate change. I look forward to your commitments for advancing the development agenda. Please accept my best wishes for a successful forum. Thank you. I now have the honor to invite Mr. Michael Moller, the Director General of the United Nations Office at Geneva, to address the forum. Madam President of the United Nations General Assembly, dear Presidents and Heads of Government, Your Royal Highness, Secretary General Vantad, Excellencies, Ladies and gentlemen, I am really delighted to welcome the World Investment Forum back to Geneva on its 10th anniversary. We are coming together at a critical time, three years into implementing the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, we are seeing a picture rich in contrast. On the one hand, the Sustainable Development Goals have captured the imagination of politicians, business leaders and the general public alike. We are seeing a spirit of collaboration, no more than here in Geneva in particular, like we have never seen before. But on the other hand, we are seeing progress that is uneven at best, and a pace that is frankly too slow in many areas. Now you can see a similar contrast when looking at the world more broadly. A stark dichotomy. Look one way and you see stock markets breaking record after record. You see corporate profits soaring and robust GDP growth. But look the other way and you see the number of violent conflicts escalating to the highest level in 30 years. You see a breakdown of the multilateral order, the resurgence of virulent nationalism and whole sections of society trapped in poverty and turning their back on the system. The problem, of course, is that this is a false dichotomy. The interconnected world we live in doesn't allow for a neat separation of the economic and political spheres. By that, I don't mean that there is occasional spillover and market volatility on the back of some political crisis. It's much more radical than that. We are facing a perfect storm of challenges that threaten the very functioning of our political and economic order, our way of life, and by logical extension, our way of doing business. In that sense, the contrast I mentioned on the outset around progress towards the 2030 Agenda is also a fake dichotomy, because if the imperative to leave no one behind means anything, it must mean that we either succeed across the board or we don't really succeed at all. Which brings us to today, to everyone here in this room. Whether you're a global investor, experienced diplomat, or engaged citizens, each and every one must ask themselves, are we doing everything we can to drive the 2030 Agenda forward? And more specifically, are we doing everything we can to mobilize a full range of resources, public and private, domestic and international, and are we directing them to the right place? We know what these places are. That's the brilliance of the SDGs. They show it to us long term, beyond the short termism of election cycles and quarterly reports. The 17 goals give businesses a scorecard, investors a benchmark, and all of us a roadmap. The issue is not a lack of money. Some 300 trillion US dollars in financial assets are managed by the global financial system on our collective behalf. The issue is finding pathways to direct these funds where they are needed most and where they have the greatest impact. Empowering women and youth, turbocharging growth in least developed countries, generating low carbon energy, just to name a few. And all of this in us, it is not just the right thing to do, it's a smart thing to do. Funds that invest in sustainability 
outperform peers in every metric. Businesses that go sustainable beat their competitors. And the message is simple. The sustainability train has left the station. Get on board or get left behind. And together in this room today, we have the expertise to figure out how to make sure everyone, everywhere, can get on board. I'm quite sure of that. I wish you success in this crucial endeavor. Thank you all for being here today. I thank Mr. Michael Moller, Director General of the United Nations Office at Geneva, for his opening statement. I now have the honor to invite Ms. Um, Gabriela Guevas Barron, the President of Interparliamentary Union, to address the forum. President of the General Assembly, President, Royal Highness, Secretary General, Director General, Excellencies, distinguished par participants. I am very pleased to have this opportunity to address you as President of the Interpar Interparliamentary Union, the World Organization of National Parliaments, and also as a parliamentarian from Mexico. I believe this is the very first time the IPU is invited to this podium, which I take as a strong recognition of the role of parliaments and parliamentarians in this discussion on investments for development in the era of SDGs. The 2030 Agenda and its Sustainable Development Goals constitute the most ambitious plan to counter poverty, inequality, environmental degradation, and ultimately conflict ever crafted at the United Nations. It is so ambitious that we only have 12 years to change the planet. This plan calls for sweeping policy reforms at all levels, as well as for new thinking and new ways of doing things in both public and private sectors. As a close partner of the United Nations, the IPU is working to mainstream the SDGs in the parliaments and to ensure that budgets and laws are aligned with the SDGs. In this context, the IPU is also keen to support the whole agenda of financing for the SDGs, which of course includes looking for ways to mobilize private sector investments. It is well established that the whole SDGs enterprise can succeed only if governments parliaments, civil society, and the private sector work together, driven by the shared vision of what needs to be done for the good of our people and our planet. It is often said that public finance alone can provide for the infrastructure, the social services, and many other public goods that are needed to bring the SDGs to fruition. This is generally true although it tends to discount the tremendous role of public funding in things like research and development that led innovation in the private sector, or the role of public investment in education, health, infrastructure that nurture human capital and other conditions for enterprises to thrive in. Undoubtedly, corporations like low taxes and are among those responsible for the shortchanging governments of important revenues. Yet, studies also shown that the tax regime is less important to private sector than the overall institutional setup, the human capital, and the infrastructure of the countries where it plans to invest. This creates a policy space for a strong partnership between investors and governments to be forged. The private sector certainly has a role to play in both developed and developing countries. Enterprises can invest more and better, particularly in terms of labor and environmental standards, and into all kinds of innovative products that improve people's lives and the quality of the environment. Just think of the market potential of solar panels and battery rechargers that can work off grid, uh, off grid and can be made at low cost. Hundreds of millions of people currently living by candlelight or coal burning 
ovens in remote areas would benefit at the same time as producers make a reasonable return. I commend those investors here who have seen the SDGs not only as a challenge, but an opportunity to marry profit making with a sustainable development agenda. Still, having said this, I want to be very clear about the central role of governments and of parliaments in this regard, particularly in the light of the 2008 economic and financial crisis that is still with us and that taught us some very hard lessons. SDGs, compatible private investments, will not happen automatically and to the scale we need without a strong government leadership and parliamentary oversight. Voluntary standards and initiatives can only go so far in placing the SDGs at the heart of private sector decisions. Government and parliament must set their rules through legislation that provide an enabling environment for enterprises to thrive in ways that contribute effectively to human well-being. This means, first and foremost, installing rules to restrain the current financiation of the economy, which promotes short-term profit, profit-making and speculation instead of long-term investment in the real economy of producers and consumers. When, when it is so much easier to make money from money, why should one bother to invest in the real economy where risk and higher, uh, uh, risks are higher and profit margins lower? Investments everywhere, but particularly in developing countries, will not have the impact we want if their time horizon remains as short as is it today. We need more investors to engage for the long term and with the uh, good of the country in which they invest foremost on their minds. For too long, developing countries were told not to bother with policies that would establish clear objectives for their industrial development. Focus on infant industries that might become winners in the marketplace and establish role for foreign investors to make sure that source goods and services locally spurring the domestic private sector. For too long, governments have understood this agenda of private sector investment as one entailing to deregulating our finance as the fuel for private sector investment and of privatization of public assets on grounds that markets driven by individual competing interests who uh, known better as should not be interfered with. If we are serious about investing with the SDGs in mind, we need to go back to basics and recognize that we need smart regulation and strong institutional frameworks, frameworks to enable the private sector to flourish. This includes, for example, demanding more than corporate social responsibility, but also corporate accountability to the communities in which, in which they operate and to consumers and citizens more broadly. It includes law to uphold workers' rights, such as the right to unionize, and to counter the current wave toward more precarious, informal, and stable working conditions. And it may include a whole host of other measures directly into the financial sector, such as tax on international financial transactions, transactions calibrated to deter short-term speculative movements. To further steer the private sector toward the SDGs, we can also change the rules of public procurement. Government spends some 15 to 20 percent of GDP hiring private companies to provide services and infrastructure, tightening the labor and environmental standards that these companies must follow can generate a ripple effect throughout the private sector to push competition to the top. As the World Bank notes, large firms dominate the global economy, and 10% of all companies generate 80% of all profits. This concentration of market power is a problem globally, but it is worse in many developing countries where industry is still undeveloped, and governments lack the technical capacity or the, or the political stamina to negotiate strong investment and competition rules to protect the domestic sector. Of course, as parliamentarians, we need to address 
many important issues. Transparency is a mandate. If we really want to build trust for investments, we need to underline transparency in all our uh, processes. Of course, trade. Trade, uh, trade is a very important trigger for investments and development. And of course, uh, underlining what the President of the General Assembly said, the financial and economic inclusion of women is also a mandate. Last but not least, a particular area of concern for the IPU is the whole question of private-public partnerships on which so, many, so much hope is being placed today. Excellencies, in closing, let me reiterate our strong commitment as parliamentarians to work with the United Nations and all stakeholders, including those in the private sector, in the implementation of this agenda. To be clear, parliamentarians have a huge responsibility here. First, our duty of representation. Parliament is the place where the competing interests of society must be heard and reconciled into a common agenda all people, including the most marginalized, can benefit from. Second, legislation. There is taxes, budgets, subsidies, incentives, transparency, rules. In one word, certainty for all, for public, private, social sectors. The IPU works to strengthen parliaments so they are more open, inclusive, and transparent. This, I believe, will help us to support the vision for a more proactive public policy to mobilize the private sector that I just underlined. We have only 12 years to change the world. To borrow from a famous saying, in the age of SDGs, there is no I, you, or them anymore. There is only us. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Cuevas, parent president of Interparliamentary Union, for her statement from the pers perspective of the lawmakers worldwide. I now have the honor to invite Ms. Um, Nandini Sukuma, the exec Chief Executive Officer of the World Federation of Exchanges. Good afternoon, distinguished fellow panelists and audience, from whom I see some of my members here. It's a pleasure to be rep here representing industry at the opening reception of the World Investment Forum 2018, a key marker and milestone in our achievement of the discourse around these issues. The World Federation of Exchanges is the global trade group for exchanges and clearinghouses. We represent more than 200 exchange groups and CCPs around the world. Our exchanges are home to nearly 45,000 listed companies, and the market capitalization of these entities is over 82.5 trillion US dollars. Around 82 trillion in trading annually passes through the infrastructures that WFE members safeguard. Exchanges also seek to promote the development of small and medium enterprise. At the end of 2017, there were 6,800 companies approximately listed on 33 SME markets with a total market capitalization of around 1.3 trillion US. Over 12,000 companies have listed on these markets over their lifetime, raising a combined 251 billion US. Our members, the exchanges, are both local and global. They operate the full continuum of markets in both developed and emerging markets. And we are representative more broadly of the markets that we safeguard. Of our members, 36.8% are in Asia Pacific, 43% in EMEA, and 21% in the Americas. And the number of countries with the stock exchange has grown dramatically over the past 40 years, from just over 50 in 1975 
to over 160 in 2015. This increase is partly attributable to a growing consensus about the role of stock exchanges in promoting economic development, the reason all of us are here today, and also partly to a growing consensus about sustainable economic development. And that is something, again, all of us here today are concerned with. Our members sit at the junction of the political, financial, and the real economy. Well-functioning exchanges enable economic growth and development by facilitating the mobilization of financial resources, by bringing together those who need capital to innovate and grow with those who have resource to invest. They do this within an environment that is regulated, secure, transparent, and equitable. Exchanges also seek to promote good corporate governance among their listed companies, encouraging transparency, accountability, and respect for the rights of shareholders and key stakeholders, such as all of you in this room today. Now turning to sustainable development, UNCTAD estimates that 5 trillion US to 7 trillion a year annually will be needed to realize the sustainable development goals by 2030. This includes investments in infrastructure, clean energy, agriculture, water, and sanitation. While government financing remains critically important, much of this capital will need to be provided by the private sector. If executed well, there is also the potential for a strong return on investment. For example, the Business and Sustainable Development Commission has estimated that if the Sustainable Development Goals, if met, have the potential to facilitate an estimated 12 trillion US in market opportunities in four economic systems, food and agriculture, cities, energy and materials, and health and well-being. In the November 2017 UN Environment World Bank Group Roadmap for a Sustainable Financial System, the authors wrote, sustainable growth will be one of the greatest challenges of the 21st century. And also that the full potential of the financial system needs to be harnessed to serve as an engine in the global economy's transition towards sustainable development. Exchanges are already playing a role in enhancing the availability of sustainable finance and addressing that financing gap. In addition to enhancing access to finance for SMEs, exchanges are promoting greater sustainability disclosure among their listed companies and providing mechanisms for green and social finance. This will only continue. On Tuesday afternoon here, we have a session dedicated to the role of exchanges in promoting sustainable finance. And on Wednesday afternoon, we are exploring the role of commodity derivatives markets in promoting sustainability. Last year, the WFE and UNCTAD wrote a joint report. We titled it very simply, The Role of Stock Exchanges in Fostering Economic Growth and Sustainable Development. Together in that report, we ended. The mobilization of finance is central to what exchanges do, and the existence of well-functioning exchanges can therefore contribute to economic growth and development. There are also opportunities, which many exchanges have already identified, to build on this financing function to enhance SME access to finance and to enable the mobilization of capital to address significant long-term sustainability challenges. So now, in conclusion, let me make a call for action to all of us in this room. Together, exchange, investor, company, government, regulator, entrepreneur, together we can create that ecosystem and step confidently into the future. I look forward to hearing from all of you in the days ahead. Thank you.